Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran, and we finally got more stuff coming out for patch 8.2. Blizzard decided to do a content preview of patch 8.2. So in this video, I want to cover all the main important aspects of what is to come in the future of World of Warcraft. First of all, Blizzard is going to be releasing two new zones. We got the Nazjatar and Mechagon. We got ourselves the new raid Azhar's Eternal Palace and Mechagon Dungeon. We have ourselves changes to the Heart of Azeroth system, Magni and the storyline between the Heart of Azeroth and the Titans being involved. More war campaign stuff, Norman Torrent, Heritage Armor, which we all took a preview before, New Islands, Arathi Heroic Warfront, and much more. So in this video, I'm going to lightly touch on every single aspect, talk a little bit about each one of those, and later in the future, I might make a far more detailed video talking about specific aspects of patch 8.2. We're gonna do this in the order the Blizzard presented stuff. So first of all, we got ourselves the Najatar. Honestly, I'm very excited to see more about this stuff. I'm very, very interested about this whole Night Elven slash Coral stuff. And it's actually kind of exciting to see a walking tree ant, an ancient with corals growing out of him. We also got a lot more in terms of the environment as well as the deep blue underwater areas like the raid itself. The raid itself won't really be a water raid but they did confirm that one of the bosses will be an underwater boss. They do want to touch on every aspect of the deep blue ocean, the dark depths, the scary and the unknown of it. Which I think is awesome because I feel like deep blue oceans always scared the shit out of people. You never really know what it's on a very, very bottom floor of an ocean. Any kind of creature may lurk down there. So that's what they're trying to do for this whole zone as well as the raid. The raid itself is actually very gloomy, which I think is going to be interesting. A lot of the raids have usually some sort of a color palette to it. Like, for example, the last raid in Legion and Taurus was very green. I would say that this current raid tier is very much like kind of like a murky blue color for most of the color palette. This one is going to be this really dark, deep blue slash purple for it. And I really do like the architecture. I really am excited about the boss fights as well. Also overall in Najatar, it looks like there's going to be a lot of content to do. For Alliance and Hold, they talked a bit about more of what the factions are going to be doing there, which is helping out some of the denizens of Najatar to help fight against the Naga. I kind of like how for Alliance they have these underwater warriors they'll be helping, while for the Horde they'll be really helping a band of giants and giblins and other things. Maybe a potential for any of those uh, factions to become an allied race, like a giblin goblin, or any of those like fish-like warriors that they were showing off back in BlizzCon. They also talked a bit about some of the questing and structure for it. They do want to expand more on the world quest system by adding more different ways to complete world quests and also change the world quest. Like for example, certain rares will occupy certain zones. Depending on what kind of rare, there'll be different approaches to that world boss. Like for example, let's say it's a rare that's really kind of like a hunter and like setting up traps or where. So next time you go into the zone, there might be an enemy with a bunch of stealth ads that will ambush you out of nowhere, traps laid everywhere, and the enemy is gonna wanna maybe fight you for a bit, then retreat to another area, trying to force the players to run through, again, a flurry of traps. On top of that, we'll also be kind of being friendly with some of the factions on Najatar, leveling them up and doing their own world quest, which is going to be kind of weird, but could have potentially be something fun to do. Also, the special abilities that those guys will have will be, I think, very similar to the Order Hall followers that we had back in Legion, which I think a lot of people like to have a little bit of a help when you're outside questing, like a guardian who could maybe uh, tank some more of the mobs for you while you do damage, so you could be out there safe on your own. Every one of those allies that you help, as you level them up, as you help them with their special missions and quests, you'll also be able to get specific cosmetic items from them. So I feel like it'll add a bit more replayability, at least for one main character. Then we got ourselves Mechagon Island. That place looks absolutely fantastic, even though it's a pile of heap of trash and everything it looks amazing i love some of the different mounts that they have different enemies they have i very much like how they're playing around with this whole gnomish architecture for it and mechagon dungeon stuff looks amazing too but i'll get into that in just a second i think mechagon looks absolutely impressive spectacular and the said that they want to imply this whole goblin gnomish tinkery aspect of it by allowing players to work towards certain buildings to build up 
I feel like it'll function very similar to, uh, let's say, the Broken Isles back in Legion. How you could work with your faction towards, let's say, a mage tower, or let's say, a command outpost, or any of the other buildings that provide you specific buffs and maybe unlock certain special rares to come out to the island. So I think it'll be really cool. Maybe we'll see a mage tower come out or a mage tower experience come out out of Mechagon in the future. One of the things I am not quite sure about Mechagon is the fact that they want you to build up this mech that apparently will give you different bonuses and resources. It sounds kind of interesting at first, but some of the bonuses that it can give you is maybe a transportation mechanism, like a teleport, that takes you straight to the dungeon instead of having to run through rares. Doesn't sound that exciting because I feel like, I'll say as a rogue, I can run through all the enemies fairly easily, and I don't think a lot of players will have that much trouble with all those rares, but maybe some of the items you'll be able to construct with the junkyard tinkering mechanic might be something you might be able to take outside everywhere else in the world. My fear is it'll be just certain like grenades and doodads that you might be able to use in those leveling areas, but it's not something you might be able to take permanently for your character. So it could be a nice novelty, but I don't really know how good it will be. We'll just have to wait and see once it hits PTR to find out what kind of items they will offer. Then to talk more about Mechagon itself, first of all, they added a unique trinket. It's going to be a pocket-sized computational device. Try and saying that three times fast. The trinket itself will have a couple different punch card slots, similar to gems, and the punch cards will have different effects. So you can construct, let's say, what kind of stats you want, what kind of special effect you want, and then what kind of a super special effect you want. Things like increase your lung capacity so you can swim for longer, or maybe track nearby mechanical creatures so you know where they are around the corner as you go around Mechagum. I like the fact that they have a customizable trinket. I think it's awesome, and I really hope past what they've shown on the live stream, they'll have a lot more punch cards for us to play with. Currently, when taking a look at this trinket, I don't know how good it will be. Right now, a lot of classes in the game rely on primary stats, but there are certain specs in the game that do benefit more from secondaries, like that amount of crit and versatility could be amazing for my rogue, but I think the flat amount of agility that you would get with a trinket still could outweigh that. So in terms of the viability of this trinket, I'm still not sure. We'll find out more once we're able to test it on the PTR. Then finally we got the Mechagon dungeon and honestly it looks amazing. I love a lot of the nuts and bolts and all that scrap and cogs and wheels and everything about it. It looks very exciting. I would love to check it out in patch 8.2. Overall it looks pretty great. The fact that they have the underbelly which is going to be part 1 of the dungeon I'm guessing. And then you have the main city itself with the King Mechagon himself. It looks great. In a some sense, some areas definitely look like a Santa's workshop with all of the gnomes and all the cogwheels moving around. And then, of course, they have the massive Croesus mecha boss. I absolutely love it. The more massive bosses they can put in the game, the better. I'm actually super excited about that one. Next, we're going to talk a bit about the Heart of Azeroth systems that Blizzard wants to implement. So, think about your artifact weapons back in Legion. How you would go to your order hall and you would put them into like a pedestal where you could power up that weapon with different traits and active abilities and different skins. So, very similarly, we'll be doing something like that in BFA. The Heart of Azeroth, where we usually go to every time we want to go to Magni, we will be able to add that necklace to some sort of a pedestal and modify it from there through a questline to unlock that kind of system. With this new system, it's very similar to the artifact weapons of Legion. With artifact weapons, you had relics that you would put at the top of your weapon, and they would basically modify one of your traits in order to be slightly stronger. Now this system is going to be a lot more powerful and impactful compared to the relic system as essentially you'll be putting in these essences into your necklace. There will be three slots for essences. One of them will be an active essence, so the active effect of an essence will be used, while the other two are passives. Each essence comes with an active and a passive ability. So you'll be able to look at three different essences that you have, the rarity of those essences, and decide which passive and active effects you would rather have. And you should be able to swap them around fairly easily. You'll be able to unlock these essences from different activities, as far as it says, world quests, PvP, as well as raids. But I wouldn't be surprised if you could craft certain essences with professions, maybe even unlock certain essences as a given, just from doing some of the quests, like just unlocking the heart of Azeroth itself, and maybe future war campaign questlines. 
some of the effects that these essences hold, we'll take a look at on the World of Warcraft website. For example, the DPS when focusing Iris has an active and a passive ability, so you could choose either or. First of all, the active ability is a short cast with a fairly short cooldown of 1.5 minutes, so you'll be able to use it fairly often. Focus excess Azeroth energy into the heart of Azeroth, then expel the energy outwards, dealing a bunch of fire damage to all enemies in front of you over 2.7 seconds. Imagine being a rogue in PvP, stun locking an enemy and blasting him for half the health and fire damage from your necklace. That'll be insane. Also, you have a minor power, which is a passive. Every two seconds, Heart of Azeroth absorbs nearby latent Azeroth energy. Increasing your haste by 29, stack it up to 10 times. Overall, this essence gives you a fairly decent passive and a decent active ability. So now you can pick and choose between different essences of what you want to use for your DPS, tank, or healer role. And I'm pretty sure certain essences will be able to double up, like a, there's certain specific ones just for healer, certain specific ones just for tank, which I'm kind of glad they're separating, especially for the PvP aspect of the game. They will also have a system where you can upgrade these essences, so hopefully somebody that gets one in world quest, pvp or raids will be able to upgrade the essence active as well as passive abilities. You'll start with green, go into blue, eventually get it to purple, and then you get the legendary version of the essence. No, it's not an actual legendary item, it'll simply come with a special skin for the effect that you end up using. I don't know if it works for passives, but definitely will work for active abilities. So in a way, whether you get these essences from raiding, PvP, or world quests, as long as you upgrade them to max level, an upgraded essence can maybe stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other essences. So hopefully they won't have a situation where, let's say, top-tier mythic raiders will have the best of the best slots that can be used everywhere within PvP and PvE. Hopefully the PvP essences will be able to hold their own ground. The world quest ones for casual community will be able to be fairly sufficient and decent, so hopefully you won't have like PvPers feeling like, oh, Oh, now I have to raid and I have to kill Azhar as the final boss on Mythic in order to get that PvP competitive advantage. Next thing Blizzard talked about is mount equipment. To be able to equip your mounts with different equipment in order to make certain aspects of the game and traveling a little bit easier. Some of the ideas that presented in the recent livestream were like a prevention from a mount from being dazed. Water walking, which would save me a lot of time than having to grind in Mr. Pandaria for the angler's rep just to get myself a water strider. And a parachute when you jump from too high can allow a lot of players a lot more verticality and movement around the game. Speaking about verticality and movement, Pathfinder Part 2 will be added into the game and you'll finally be able to fly all over Azeroth. Literally. Kulturas, Zandalar, as well as the two new zones of Mechagon and Najatar will all be areas where you can take into your fly mounts and fly all over the place. Some of the other mount rewards, for example, Battle for Azeroth Season 3 PvP and PvE will come into play with a lot more loot and a lot more mounts. Like, for example, a mechanical cogwheel, a crab that'll scuttle sideways as you ride it, and even some sort of a lizard mount. Some of the smaller stuff, but kind of exciting, is continuation with the war campaign to find out what the hell happened to Bane, as well as heritage armor for gnomes and Tauren. Super happy about the Tauren one. You guys let me know which one you like more, the gnome one or the Tauren. Some of the side stuff that you guys might not be excited about, but I did want to mention. We got ourselves continuation of the Heroic Warfronts implementation. They really do want to add a Heroic version for Warfronts, where a guild that usually raids will be able to dive into Heroic Warfront, hopefully for better loot, but an actual challenging experience, which might be what Warfronts actually needed. You got ourselves Stratholme Pet Dungeon, if you like pet battles. We got an overall revamp to some of the world events and world quests out in the game. Changes to Brewfest Holiday, like a pretzel eating contest and pretzel hats. Season 3 of PvP with a brand new arena, and actually a return of Ashran. Not really sure how a lot of people will like it, but Ashran is coming back as an epic battleground. Maybe they'll actually redo Ashran and create some sort of a goal for everybody to stride towards and give people an ability to actually have a definitive finish to Ashran rather than an everlasting battleground. In the image for Ashran, they also do have some of the images of what the future PvP gear might look like. Of course, we're going to be going into Najatar and the raid will be very Naga-esque. 
but it looks like Blizzard is going to be applying a lot of the corals into our gear. Not really sure how every single one of the sets looks, but hopefully the Elite version will look far more badass than what we're seeing right now. I'll make a separate video on some of the things I'm especially excited about for patch 8.2 in a little bit of time. But right now, this is everything that Blizzard has coming up in the next patch, 8.2 Wrath of Ajara, which is coming out in about a week on PTR. Now, Blizzard also mentioned that they really want a lot of people to get on PTR as m fast as they can and really test out the new necklace system. Feedback is important, so give them as much feedback as you can if you do decide to get on PTR, test out the necklace through and through, try grinding for it, try not grinding for it, try using abilities and playing around with different essences, tell them what you like, tell them what you don't like, tell them what works, tell them what doesn't, any kind of feedback will make the system that much better for patch 8.2. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed this update and coverage of everything Patch 8.2 has to offer with the new content update from Blizzard themselves. Be sure to let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comments below. I'd like to hear from what you guys think. I'm personally actually kind of excited for Patch 8.2. Most of the stuff I'm very, very much excited, and the stuff I'm not, I made sure to mention in the video. Thank you guys all. I'll see all of you in the next one.